write down the name of the conservative force acting on the trolling. Well, even without looking at the actual situation, we know that there is gravitational force acting on any object near the surface of the Earth. And gravitational force is a conservative force. So the answer to 5.1 is gravitational force. So let's just go ahead and write that down. We have gravitational force as the answer to 5.1. That is the conservative force acting on the trolley. It is near the surface of the Earth, so gravitational force should be acting on that object. And gravitational force is conservative. It is independent of the path taken. The work done by gravitational force is independent of the path taken. That is 5.1. Let's go ahead and take a look at 5.2. So 5.2, calculate the work done by the frictional force on the trolley. Calculate the work done by the frictional force on the trolley. Let's now go ahead and take a look at our situation. So a force of 62.5 newtons is applied to a trolley of mass m cages parallel to the inclined surface as shown to keep it moving an inclined surface at a constant velocity. Well, moving down an inclined surface at a constant velocity. So our object is actually moving down the incline. The force F is just applied to make sure that it is moving at a constant velocity. The vertical height of the inclined surface is 12 meters. Refer to the diagram below. A kinetic frictional force of 35.5 Newton acts on the trolley as it moves down the incline. Right, and then our equation 5.2, we want to calculate the work done by the frictional force on the trolley. Well, the work done by the frictional force should be equal to the magnitude of the frictional force multiplied by the magnitude of the displacement multiplied by cos of theta. Let's calculate the work done by the gravitational force on the trolley as it is moving from point A to point B. So let's go ahead and take a look. We do have the frictional force. It is equal to 35.5 newtons. Do we have delta X? No, we don't. We are given the angle, which is 30 degrees, and the height. By using the angle and the height, we can actually find delta X, right? And then cos of theta, our theta is 180 degrees. The displacement of the object is down the incline. So the frictional force should be up the incline. So let's go ahead and determine delta X. How are we going to do that? So this is our hypotenuse. We're interested in the hypotenuse. Uh, this is our opposite. So which trig ratio do we use in that case? We use sine. So we're going to have sine of theta being equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite is 12 meters. It's our height. And then the hypotenuse is our delta x, what we're interested in. The angle is 30 degrees. So we're going to have... Delta X being equal to 12 divided by sine of 30. So let me just go ahead and put that in my calculator. 12 divided by sine of 30 is 24. So from A to B is 24 meters. So there we go. We have the frictional force and we have delta X. Now we can go ahead and substitute in order to find the work done by the frictional force. Let's go ahead and do that. The work done by the frictional force will be equal to the magnitude of the frictional force, which is 35.5 multiplied by delta x. Delta x is 24. Everything multiplied by cos of 180 degrees. This is equal to. So we have 35.5 multiplied by 24 multiplied by minus 1. Cos of 180 is minus 1. So this is going to be equal to minus 852 joules. There we go. That is the work done by the frictional force. The sign doesn't indicate direction. Energy is a scalar and not a vector. That minus sign just shows that there is a loss in energy on the object. So there we go. That is how we calculate the frictional force. Not really complicated. You just needed to recall 
your trig ratios in order to calculate uh, the displacement of the object across the incline. Let's go ahead and take a look at 5.3. So 5.3, write down the change in the kinetic energy when the trolley reaches the bottom of the inclined surface. So take a look at these keywords, constant velocity. So from point A to point B, our object is moving at the same velocity. So what will be the change in the kinetic energy? Change in the kinetic energy will be equals to zero joules. The kinetic energy is not changing at all because it is moving at a constant velocity, right? A half mvf squared minus a half mvi squared will give you will give you zero because vf is equals to vi. The object it is moving at a constant velocity. That is 5.3. Let's go ahead and take a look at 5.4. So 5.4. Use the work energy theorem to calculate the mass m of the trolley. Use the work energy theorem to calculate the mass m of the trolley. Right. So usually we have to pick between a work net is equals to the change in the object's kinetic energy and a work non-conservative is equals to the change in the object's kinetic energy plus the change in the object's potential energy. But then this question is quite specific. We need to use the work energy theorem. So let's use the work net is equals to the object's change in its kinetic energy. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So work net, we know fully well that it is equals to the object's change in its kinetic energy. Let's have a free body diagram just to make sense of what is happening here. So as our object is moving down the incline, there is weight eight acting on the object, right? We have the weight acting on the object. And then we have the normal force, obviously. And then we have the frictional force and the force F, which is applied. The normal force is not doing any work. The forces that are doing work is the frictional force, force applied, and the weight. So what are we saying? We have work done by the frictional force plus the work done by the weight, plus the work done by the force applied. This is equals to zero. The change in the object's kinetic energy is zero, right? That's our answer to 5.3. So we don't have to calculate again because we already know that it is zero. So the work done by the frictional force, we already have that, we calculated it above, right? It is minus 800 52 plus the work done by the weight and the work done by the force applied. Well, we know fully well that the work done by conservative forces is equal to minus the change in the potential energy. So we can use this equation to calculate the work done by the weight. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have minus the mass gravitational acceleration height final minus height initial plus the work done by the force applied. The force applied, let's go ahead and take a look. We have 62.5 newtons. So this is going to be 62.5 newtons. Delta X is 24. We also calculated it above 24 multiplied by cos of 180 right and this is going to be equals to zero we know that the change in the kinetic energy is zero so let's see what we're going to have we're going to have minus 852 plus multiplied by minus the mass of the object m is what we're interested in the gravitational acceleration is 9.8. The final height at point B is 0, right? So we're going to have 0 minus the initial height, which is 12 meters, the height at A. So we have 12, everything close. And then 62.5 multiplied by 24 multiplied by cos of 180. That is minus 1,500. So we have minus 1,500 
being equals to zero. So we are essentially done with the physics. We just solving for m. So let's take minus 1500 and minus 852 to the right hand side. We're going to have minus 9.8 m multiplied by minus 12 being equals to 1500 plus 852. So let me just add those two, 1,500 plus 852, right. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have, let's start with the right-hand side. When we add 1,500 and 852, we get 2,352. And then minus 9.8 multiplied by minus 12. Minus 9.8 multiplied by minus 12, that is... 117.6 so we have 117.6 m and that is equal to 2352 let's divide both sides by 117.6 117.6 so 2352 divided by 117.6 that is equal to 20 so the mass of our object is 20 kgs